Hi friends, we are going to be looking at how we can rename fractions today that are greater than 1. So our, our objective reads, how can I rename a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number? So there's a couple of things that we can recognize that can help us. So what skills do we need to rename fractions? We are going to need to decompose numbers or break them down. Like the number 25, we can decompose by saying it's 20 plus 5. We can decompose it even further by saying 10 plus 10 plus 5. We're going to be using that same skill of decomposing with fractions. And we also need to understand the value of 1. 1 whole could mean 4 out of 4 pieces. It could mean 10 out of 10 pieces of a pie. It could mean that you have 100 out of 100 pieces of something. And we're going to use those ideas today to help us rename a fraction greater than 1 as a mixed number. The other idea that we need to be familiar with is a mixed number. Now, we've chatted about this a little bit, but a mixed number means that it's a whole number, like it's like any number that we write and a fraction. So a whole number that I know is 3, and a fraction that I know is 1 half. So a mixed number would look like 3 and a half. And that's just one example. There are many, 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 many different kinds of mixed numbers. So it's any whole number with a fraction. So I've written a sample already one way that we can take a look at this. So let's say, for instance, you're asked to add 3 fourths plus 3 fourths. Well, I see my denominator's the same, so that stays fourths, and 3 plus 3 equals 6. Now, 6 fourths, hmm, that's an improper fraction, and it's greater than 1 because the numerator is larger than the denominator. So this fraction is greater than 6 fourths is greater than 1. So we want to turn that into a mixed number, which becomes a proper fraction. So one way I can do that is to think about what that would look like in an illustration. So I see that my denominator here is 4. So that means I need pieces of 4. So I drew my first pie, my first circle, and I split it into four pieces. So I shaded them in one, two, three, four pieces, which is one whole, or another way of saying that is four fourths. So we're decomposing the number right now and using an understanding that one can be represented as four out of four. Now, we need to get to six pieces, so I need to draw another pie, split it into four pieces. So I have four done already, four out of four. I need to shade till I get to six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. In my second pie, I have two out of four, out of four. So together, that equals... 1 and 2 fourths. So that's going to be my mixed number, 1 and 2 fourths. We're going to try this same work but in a different way. The number 23 fifths, I'm looking at and I'm thinking, you know, that would be a lot of pies I need to draw in order to figure out what my mixed number is. So there's another way that I can figure it out. And the steps are listed below. First thing I'm going to do is circle the denominator, which is 5. Then I determine how many sets or multiples of the denominator. So multiples of the denominator, which in this case is 5. So how many multiples of 5 are in the numerator. So I'm going to count by fives. So I'm going to say 5, 10, 
15, 20, and now I only have three more, plus three. So I just decomposed into a mixed number. So I would have one pi, and now I'm using my illustrations to double check. Five pieces, another pi with five full pieces, two, three, four, five. Another pi with five full pieces, a fourth pi with five full pieces. I'm going to shade those in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and now I need three more pieces. One, two, three. So what I did was really shade in five fifths, which we also know is one whole, another five fifths I shaded in, five fifths I shaded in, five fifths I shaded in, so notice, 5, 10, 15, 20, plus 3 fifths. So I added all of my numerators together to equal 23. And I kept my denominators the same. So how do I turn this into a mixed number? Well, I know that 5 fifths is another way of saying the number 1. So 5 fifths is 1 plus another 1 plus another 5 fifths, which is 1, plus 5 fifths, which is 1, plus 3 fifths. So after adding that all together, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 4 plus 3 so 3 fifths, excuse me, 23 fifths is another way to say 4 and 3 fifths. We're going to try one more example together. We are going to look at the number 38 fifths. And we're going to use the same steps. We're going to decompose and we're going to think about the value of 1. Those are the scales we need to know. And we're going to follow the three steps. First, we're going to circle the denominator. My denominator is 5. Determine how many sets are in the numerator. So sets of the denominator that are in the numerator. And we're working with 5 again. So I'm going to count by 5s until I get to 38. So I have 5. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Now, if I added another 5, I would get to 40, but that would be too high. So I have to think. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. I want to get to 38. 36, 37, 38. That's plus 3. Now, all of these numbers are going to be out of 5 because we're talking about multiples of 5 because it's our denominator. So I'm going to make each of these fifths. And now I can see and use the value of 1. 5 fifths, I know, is another way to say 1 whole. So 1 plus 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 3 fifths. So what does that equal all together? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 plus 3 fifths equals 7 and 3 fifths as a mixed number. Okay? 
So take your time. We'll practice more examples tomorrow, and good luck.